Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about study abroad tips that I wish I knew before I studied abroad. I am going to go over some of the basic ones, but there's also going to be some of the stuff that I'm glad I brought, the stuff that I didn't think to bring that I should have, the places I went, a little bit about my experience, just all of it. So, let's just jump right into it. So, I studied abroad fall 2023, and I did it through Virto Education. I love that program. If you have the opportunity to go with Virto Education, I highly suggest it. They only do it for freshman students. I just got lucky as a sophomore to be able to go. At first, I was going through a breakup right before, like, right before going, like, one month before. And I remember I was planning six months ahead I was saying, oh, I'm going to go to Spain, I'm going to study abroad, I was telling everyone that, I was so excited, really looking forward to it, and then I found out I couldn't go because I was a sophomore and it was only for freshmen. They ended up telling me I could go like one month prior to the actual departure date, and obviously that is not a lot of time, and I was very like apurada with everything I needed to do, like I had to hurry up and get all the stuff I needed together like my visa and everything like that and it was kind of stressful and going through the breakup at the same time I am extremely grateful for my mom because without her I probably wouldn't have gone I left in August and going to the airport I made a video of leaving if you haven't watched that go watch the leaving video I was so scared I was terrified I went to the bathroom after I passed the gate where I had to say bye to them I was crying so much you'll see it in the video but I went to the bathroom for 20 minutes after that and I did not want to get out I was texting my friend that I had made online through the app because my program had an app where you can like get to know the people that are going see the events they had a lot of events beforehand so you can talk to some people which is why I recommend the program but I was talking to him and I was like I'm so nervous and so was he like we were both like nervous in the bathroom both of us like oh my god what is happening and I'm gonna go into the first tip which is talk to people that are going beforehand because that helped me tremendously especially when it came to the roommate selection I chose my roommate because she was from Miami um I was on a zoom call I just got to know her a little bit and not even that much but I thought she was cool because she had curly hair she's from Miami she seemed like bubbly and fun and chill and that's like my vibe so I reached out to her and I was like hey do you want to be my roommate you're from Miami and so am I I thought we would get along good and then she was like oh yeah I'd be down coincidentally I met her like at my job she was there with her friends it wasn't even awkward it, I was just very nervous and I don't know if she was probably but we were just talking like a very little bit chit chatting like oh my god are you excited da, 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 da. I had the best roommate in the whole program like I am so eternally grateful that she was my roommate because now we're actually really good friends like we're super close we still talk to this day she lives in Tampa and I might be going to that school with her so so much more to come with her talk to people if you have the opportunity to talk to them beforehand because i met her like that i met preston is my like one of my very best friends he is still he doesn't live anywhere close to me but we still talk like every day he made my experience feel a lot better as well so thanks for reaching out to me preston he was like my comfort friend so whenever i needed company i would go with him or we would do we would explore together and all this stuff so he was another one that i'm like super grateful for um, these are going to be like some of the important stuff. First, credit cards, debit cards, anything like that that you're planning on taking. I highly suggest the Revolut card if you're thinking of getting a card specifically for studying abroad. I was able to customize it. I put a little plate on it. I put a little quote on it. I would show it to you, but I don't have it with me. I highly suggest it because it has zero withdrawal fees. So I would always take out my euros with that card. All I remember is that it would say, okay, I spent this much money and it's this much in US dollars. Like I don't, it didn't have any add-ons to that. It would just say how much I spent and how much it was in the US. Check how much your foreign transaction fees are on your credit or debit cards because I spent most of my money through fees and I didn't even know. I just didn't follow my schedule anymore after the first two months. So that last month I was like all over the place and I ran out of money. So <laughs> so cell phone data plan. I have an iPhone 14 Pro but it's not fully paid. It's not unlocked or anything like that. So 
I either had the option of getting an international plan or getting an old phone to put an eSIM or a data plan or whatever. So I borrowed my stepmom's phone because hers was fully paid. And the international plan, I have AT&T at least, it was just too much money. You can check with your program, ask them about that cell phone data plan because they should have some options for you. I paid like 26 a month for my data plan and it was perfectly fine. I had good data, it was it was good, like I got the most basic package and everything was fine. Something else that are not in any of the videos I've watched of this, when you're going traveling, like on the weekends or whatever to another country or another city or whatever, when you're studying abroad, if you are going to another country, you're gonna need an eSIM when you're over there because your data plan won't work. And I didn't know that at first. Thank you, Preston, for telling me that because I would have been like stuck on the streets like I was in Rome for that first day. Literally just search up, you can use Air Aerolo, I think it's called. I'll put it here on the screen. Aerolo has a lot of cheap options for like a couple of days when you're traveling. I paid like $2 for like three days or something like that. So I'll get one in London, I would get one in Italy, I got one in Africa. Like I needed to get one for all of these places that were not in Spain so that I can actually be able to use my phone. An app that I use so much when I was over there, number one, City Mapper. I would put like where I want to go and it would tell me all of the different ways I can get there, which would be the fastest, the cheapest, stuff like that. It's an amazing app. I highly recommend that app. That was like the only map app that I used. Number two, I would use Rome to Rio. I would only use this one when I was planning my trips like when it's outside of Spain especially. I would use that app to see how to get there the fastest and cheapest. I put like, okay, is it cheaper to go in train or plane? Like that app is good to see the actual like transportation to these places. There's an app called Bin, B-E-E-N. With Bin, you can put all the places that you travel to and it's like, let me show you. It looks like this. I bought the like an updated version I guess where you can put the cities that you've been to as well and I just really wanted to put that too so um, these are all the places I've been to the next app that I suggest is hostel world I did not know what hostels were before my study abroad experience I am aware that a lot of people are scared of hostels because of like a movie there is. I forgot what the movie's called, but like people getting kidnapped and stuff. You don't need to be scared. That was the cheapest option. I would go with like six friends and get a room with six people. So we would all get that same room and put all their names so that we were all together in our room by ourselves and it was fine. They also have hostels that are single. Obviously you're gonna be more expensive, but still cheaper than hotels. The last app that I wanted to talk about it's eDreams. eDreams is where I bought all of my plane tickets and it is like the cheapest app ever. You're gonna think it looks like a scam. I'm still alive and healthy and amazing and it's because of those prices why I went so many places. I bought the ticket for Ibiza like way in advance. Like I bought it a month earlier. I paid a total of $26 to go to Ibiza. How many people can you meet They'll say they paid $26 to go to Ibiza. Nobody, nobody. But I went to Ibiza for $26. Traveling everywhere is so much easier. So I highly recommend you travel as much as possible. Save all the money you need for travel. That was like my main thing. I got this little tattoo. This tattoo for me, it literally means like I unlocked the travel side of me. I'm a Sagittarius. So that's like a big thing Sagittarius do. Travel, you know, impulse, like you know we just go so i got this tattoo of being like i unlocked that side of me like now i know i love traveling and i can do it in a very good way because i save so much this one is in every single video but i didn't listen pack lightly if the weight limit is 50 pounds then pack 30 okay i packed way too many shoes i took three sneakers and three heels I never even wear heels. I should have just taken one pair of heels, one pair of black heels, one pair of walking sneakers. I would have been fine. If you are a sneakerhead like me though, maybe take three. Walking shoes is the most important thing you need. That was like the number one shoe I would wear like almost all the time. I used these Salcone shoes. I'll put a picture here if I can find them. But those Salcone shoes, oh my god, like I could walk miles and not feel a thing. Get some really good walking shoes. I don't suggest Converse because a lot of people that would take Converse, it would hurt their feet. Pack the basics when it comes to clothes. Bring some clubbing clothes though because if you plan on going to a place like Ibiza, you might not have options for that if you don't bring it. So just bring like one outfit that's like kind of, you know, 
Something that I didn't bring that I wish I did is a leather jacket. A leather jacket goes with everything and especially in Europe, it's like super fashionable, super trendy. So take a leather jacket if you have one. Bring a mini fan. Let me, I have this right here. Let me show you my mini fan. I got this from Home Depot. This is my number one suggestion of what you should get for study abroad. It's like this one specifically. It's a portable charger, a flashlight, and a mini fan. Okay, it's dead, but it's a fan. This thing saved me 24 seven. Usually I don't get motion sick, but if it weren't for that fan, I would have passed out because I literally would close my eyes, put that fan like super close to my face, and then I would be fine. Like that's all I needed. It's not even that expensive. I think it's like less than 20 bucks and it is so worth it. Of course, bring a portable charger. I didn't bring one. This is the one I brought and I never even used it for the charger because I would only want it for the fan. But when I was in Rome, I did buy a portable charger, so it is good to have one just in case. Because if your phone dies and you don't know where to go in this other country, you're going to be screwed. So get a portable charger. Next, get a filtered water bottle. When you're going to go somewhere that could possibly have bad water or anything like that, or even if you're not, but if you travel somewhere that will, you're going to be so happy you have a filtered water bottle. Definitely bring adapters. Don't be stupid. Do not be stupid like me. I brought a UK adapter to Spain. If you could get an adapter that has all the different countries, I know my best friend has one of those. I just didn't feel like getting it. I should have. But if you could, get one of those because you're going to need an adapter in all the places you go to, especially if they're different places. I had to buy one on Amazon when I was over there. By the way, when you buy Amazon, it has to be like Amazon for the place you're getting. Because when I bought that adapter, I used Amazon US and sh shipped it internationally. Like, I w like, bro, I made some questionable decisions sometimes. But there's a Europe Amazon and like, it'll come normal and not have all those fees. If you like making YouTube videos, take a tripod because I'm really glad I took my tripod. I used it, not too much, but like, I used it. So if I didn't use it, I wouldn't have a lot of the stuff that I did have. And I have like a bunch of videos, not on my channel, but like memory videos, like of me and my friend Norden. I have like a really long video of us making a sandwich that I just have my camera in the corner of my tripod. Like it's good for the memories. Take a camera. Even if you're not a YouTuber, take a camera because you're going to want camera pictures, the digitals, and you're going to want videos for the memories because you're going to need to take a lot of videos. You're never going to want to forget this. So make sure you bring a good travel bag i did not do this i had a book bag that i brought as my carry-on and i wish i brought like a duffel bag like monica did but i bought one in paris do not buy those freaking bags in paris that are on the street in front of the eiffel tower because it broke so bring a good quality travel bag so that you have that ready for when you have your trips planned if you are going to a hot place just bring one jacket and then buy one when you get there if anything you should definitely bring some Thermal pants, gloves, a thermal shirt. Those are like the three basic things you should get and a good... When it comes to memories, I have a study abroad journal. I used it every day, all the time. Like, this is my... I'm one of the biggest things I'm grateful that I did do. I would use this as my everything journal. I would write down my expenses, keep track through the journal. I would do like my manifestation in here. I would do like diary entries in here. September 9th, I'm at the beach right now and it's so nice. There's an island with houses that look oldish. I bought a huge beach towel. Oh my God, this was when I went to Malaga. I love that towel. Like that's my biggest amazing purchase. I would make travel plans for each of the places I was going to. I'm gonna show you all of them because I'm so proud of them. This is Rome. There's videos of all of them. So if you wanna see my memories in a video, there's videos on my channel. This is Morocco. Isn't it so cute? I did a little boat because I traveled on a boat. That was Mallorca. Like, it's so cute. I highly suggest getting a journal because that is where you can also keep a bunch of memories like on paper. Next, if you go to the gym like I do, the gym over there, uh, it was kind of expensive. There probably are cheaper options. If not, there's probably like classes you can do or you can just work out outside. There's like really nice parks. The parks there, oh my God, beautiful. I also brought a hip thrust pad and that was my biggest regret because it took up so much space. Do not take a really big hip thrust pad. You don't need it. Make sure you do your research of the place you're going and how much everything is. 
I went to Sevilla, Spain, like I said. They had the bus. The bus, I would put like $10 a week if I wanted to use the bus that week. In Sevilla, they have the Sevi City, which is like the bikes that are all over the city. And it's $30 for the whole year. So I bought that bike thing and I'm glad I did because I did not use the bike for school like I thought I would. But I would use the bike to go on random bike rides. That was like my exercise when I stopped going to the gym. And I traveled like all of Sevilla. I would end up like an hour away. Okay. Preston and I, because he likes to play the drums. So he took me to go with him to play the drums in this place he found that was like, Sevilla is like this. You go down and there's like Dos Hermanas, like another little city. But then there's like a little sliver of some random stuff here. So there was like his drums place. And then we found like an abandoned building and explored it. And it was like so much fun. That's like one of my core memories. Renting a car was a very smart option for a lot of the places I went to. And the whole rental process was super easy. But if you're under 21, make sure you're searching up car rentals for under age 21. And you're going to need an international license. There is websites you can just... I paid $50 to get an international license. And they even gave me a physical copy of it. I got a speeding ticket in Ibiza. So also make sure you're going the speed limit. Do your research beforehand of all your trips and you will find the cheapest of everything, especially if you look earlier. But yeah, keep in mind that you you wouldn't go across the world to visit a small city. Like maybe you would go for Sevilla, but you wouldn't go for Dos Hermanas. Like that's something that was there. Take advantage that you're close to them then and go to these small cities, explore everything near you. Like go everywhere around you in Spain. Like I went to Toledo was beautiful i wish i spent more time there i was only there for a few hours and i wish i really spent more time there because it was amazing but stuff like that like keep in mind that you wouldn't go across the world to these places you would go to the bigger ones so go to them when you can i also found this other abandoned building when i was like alone on my bike ride and it was beautiful like it was huge it so abandoned in the middle of nowhere there was a lake beautiful spot to look at nature and yeah <laughs> i would go on the bus and get off on a random place that from my experience that's what i would solely do in sevilla i would explore everything and end up in random parts of the city i found like during halloween time i found like a haunted house and a new mall and yeah i'm gonna mention some stores that are great for cheap basics, Primark and Lefties, it's super cheap. It's like a Forever 21 type vibe and Primark, but they have more than just basics. So I bought like my jacket there when it started getting cold. They have Zara, everything's like cheaper. Bershka was my number one favorite shopping place. It was so cute and trendy. Not as cheap as Primark and stuff, but still not expensive because everything over there is cheaper in the end. Stradivarius is another good one. Mango, Pull and Bear. I never shopped at the last two, but... I would shop at Bershka and Stradivarius. Wherever you're going, try to put an effort to learn the language, especially if you don't know it, because that would make you a little bit more cultured and learn more stuff. And it's so interesting to see all the new stuff. Um, For example, um, in Spain, in Sevilla, flamenco is super popular. So I went to a authentic flamenco show and like a local one that Sadie took me to. And it was amazing. Like that was such a good experience that I would not have experienced ever if i didn't go so find local events and stuff like that that you can do eat their food look at their style try new things like just do all of that because it's so worth it and just say yes to like so many things if people ask you to go out say yes like even if you're tired or whatever just do it because remember this is happening once in your life and it's probably not going to happen again unless of course you do a second semester or a third or whatever be prepared to eat late Especially if you're going somewhere like Spain, they eat so late. They go out starting at 12 and I would come home at like 3 because I'm not a party person like that. But even that is crazy. Budget. Like once you get there and get a feel after the first week, don't go on a shopping spree on the first week like I did because that was crazy. Give yourself a budget for the first week before you leave. Do some research of what you think you're going to need and buy over there and I guess do that. Don't go on a shopping spree just yet. Like wait a little bit. Take some American snacks if you're like a foodie. I had a friend named Havana. She I went to her room and she had like three Captain Crunch boxes that her mom brought for her. And that was so funny. She had like American snacks. And I was like, oh, I haven't had those in a long time. So if you like American snacks like a lot, bring some because you're not going to find them over there. So if you're scared about going, don't be scared. You're going to be fine. Like I said, I was going through a breakup. I did not want to go. That was the last thing I wanted to do. I did not want to travel. I did not want to even see people or talk to people or make friends. 
but you're going to be fine this is going to be the best experience of your life and you're not going to want to come back and you're going to be so sad you're going to have post study abroad depression like a lot of us do like so many of us have compared college to that experience which is like not fair but it's just what happens after those are all the tips i have for now just leave a comment down below if any questions if you are going to study abroad congratulations this is going to be the best experience of your life and you're not going to want to come back and you're going to make so many lifetime memories and friends and everything like that so make the most of your experience use these tips and don't forget to like comment and subscribe leave some video ideas down below and yeah i love you guys stay tuned for the next one